Hello kindergarten students, Miss Bell here. I am here today to read you the nonfiction book, The Sun, Our Nearest Star. Now up until this point, uh, through virtual learning, we've been doing fictional stories. Those are stories that are made up, um, that do not tell us true facts, but are always really entertaining to read. Now we're gonna move on to nonfiction books. Nonfiction books are what teach us true facts about a certain subject. Now, I know you all are really good readers. So we're gonna look at the title of this nonfiction book and we're gonna use the words and the illustrations to try to make a good guess. What do you think this nonfiction book will be teaching us? The sun, our nearest star. Now, I'm thinking because of the title, the sun, and the illustration, a big sun, I'm thinking this book is gonna be teaching us about the sun. Hopefully that's true because if it's teaching us about bunny rabbits, I think the author chose the wrong title. Let's see, this is The Sun, Our Nearest Star by Franklin M. Branley, illustrated by Edward Miller. As we read this story, think of important facts that this nonfiction book teaches us about the sun. Here is our title page. Remember, title pages teach us and remind us what the title of the story is, The Sun, Our Nearest Star, and The Author and Illustrator by Franklin and Branley, illustrated by Edward Miller. The Sun. At night, you can see a lot of stars because the sky is dark. When the sky is bright, you can also see a star. It is the sun. The sun is our daytime star. It is also the star closest to us. The sun is very big. It is much bigger than Earth. The sun is almost a million miles across. If the earth was the size of a pea, like the vegetable we eat, like for dinner or lunch, if the earth was the size of a pea, the sun would be the size of a beach ball. Can you imagine how much bigger that is? If this is earth, this is how big the sun would be in comparison. Wow, a million miles across. Wow. The sun is very far away from us. It is much farther than the moon. A spaceship takes three days to reach the moon. It would take more than three years to reach the sun. Wow, so the moon, if you look close in this illustration, here is Earth and here is the moon. The moon is 240,000 miles away. If you were in a rocket ship, which is incredibly fast, it would take you three days to get to the moon. The sun is all the way over here. That is 93 million miles away and it would take you three years by a rocket ship to get that far. Wow. And you remember the sun is our nearest star. So even though it take three years by a rocket ship to get there, it is the closest star to us. That's what nearest means. It takes eight minutes for light to travel from our daytime star to Earth. It takes four years for light to reach the nearest nighttime star to reach us. Most of the stars are much further away than that. Wow. Eight minutes it takes the light from the sun to reach the Earth. The next nearest star it takes four years for that light to reach us. So by the time we see the light from those stars, it's already four years old. Stars are made of hot gases. In the sun and other stars, there is iron, gold, copper, and tin. They are not solid as they are on Earth. All of them are gases because they are so hot. The temperature of the surface of the sun is more than 10,000 degrees. The sun is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. To compare that, 
the temperature of the oven in our houses are only 500 degrees. So our ovens go to 500, the sun is 10,000 degrees. That is much hotter. The sun is so hot that a spaceship could not get close to it. If it ever did, the spaceship would change into a gas. It would no longer be a solid object. It would turn into a gas because it would get so hot. Without the sun, Earth would be cold and dark. There would be no plants, no animals, no bugs, birds, or flowers. Nothing could live here. So this, because of the sun, we have all living things. If we didn't have the sun, this is what Earth would look like. The sun keeps us alive. It makes corn grow and apples and wheat and bananas. Animals eat the plants. We eat the plants and the animals. They give us energy. So the energy in our food comes from the sun. It is solar energy. Without the sun, there'd be no plants. Without the plants, there'd be no animals. Without the animals and plants, there'd be no us. The sun is really important. Millions of years ago, Earth was covered with swamps and jungles. As plants and animals grew, they stored solar energy. When they died, they slowly changed to coal and oil. So ancient solar energy is stored in coal and oil. Today, we use up this stored solar energy in coal, oil, and gasoline, which is made from oil to fuel our cars and our trucks, airplanes, and rockets. So the sun created all the oil and fuel for all of our transportation we use. Who would have thought the sun was so helpful? For millions of years, the sun has warmed our planet. It still does. It will keep shining bright and warm for many more millions of years. Good thing, we need it. And this is a science experiment that has to do with the sun. Wow, readers, that was a lot of important information about the sun. Feel free to read, uh, re-listen to this story um, so you can learn more facts because good readers do read a story more than once. The more you read it, the more you listen to it, the more you'll learn. All right, readers, have a wonderful day.